Sunday also. We've just about sung all the Christmas carols in the book and then some. Two songs from the Gospel of Luke form bookends for the Advent and Christmas story. The first one, as you probably know, is the song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. Mary's song is a song of defiance that celebrates God's turning the world upside down. It's full of optimism and energy, and as such, it is very much the song of a young person. The Magnificat is one bookend to the Christmas story. The other bookend is the song of Simeon the Nunc Dimittis, as it's known in Latin. This is an old person's song, and it is sung by a geezer named Simeon. Simeon might have been a good singer in his day, but by the time we meet him in the Gospel of Luke, he is stooped and wrinkled, and his voice cracks like a wounded accordion. Luke doesn't say exactly how old Simeon is, People tend to think he's at least as old as Anna, who was also mentioned in today's reading. Anna is 84. Most people assume, too, that Simeon is a priest in the temple, although the text does not say so. It says that he is devout and he is pious, that he is looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit has rested upon him. I don't know why people think, therefore, he was some kind of minister. In those days, as in ours, ordination is not the guarantee of all these things. It had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would see someone before he saw death, the Lord's Messiah. Luke says that it was also the Holy Spirit that tapped him on the shoulder one day and told him to hot-foot it over to the temple to see the fulfillment of God's promise. Can't you picture the old gentleman making his way through the crowded streets of Jerusalem, uh, pushing his, 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 stroll, his, 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 his walker ahead? Get out of the way! Some of y'all remember Edwin Faust. Edwin was for many years our cook for the church. When emphysema became so bad that he couldn't walk very far, he got one of those electric scooters. He was hell on wheels. It was electric blue, and, and he would ride it along Capitol Circle, and people would jump out of the way on the sidewalk. And that's how I see Simeon, Simeon driving his electric blue uh, scooter through the streets of Jerusalem. When he gets to the temple, the place is very crowded. There are rich folks making their offerings of lambs and the poor folks their offerings of doves or quails or pigeons. I wonder whether Simeon even bothered to look amongst the lamb offerers or if the Holy Spirit led him directly to the coarse clothing and the rough manners of a couple that obviously is not city folks. The couple's names are Mary and Joseph, but of course Simeon does not know this. He watches as they give the priest the proper offering for Mary's purification after childbirth, and then as they present their little boy for a blessing, Simeon walks over to Mary May I hold your baby? My granddad used to do that kind of thing. He, he would walk up to some child in the grocery store, like a toddler, and say, Hey, you're a pretty good-looking little young in there. Used to scare children out of their minds. 
who knows what moves Mary to hand over her baby to this perfect stranger, but maybe it was the glint in his eye. Maybe it was the way the wrinkles in his face organized themselves into a smile. Maybe it was the way he seems to be looking past her, looking above her, looking toward something only she was beginning to ponder in her heart. Mary hands her son over, blessed at his birth by the song of angels and the visit of shepherds, blessed by the priest 40 days later, and now the means of blessing. Simeon holds the baby in his arthritic hands, and 2,000 years later, we can still hear his sigh. At last, Master, you are now dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. Luke says Simeon spoke these words, but it was not long before the church began to sing them. The Nunc Dimittis is the song of those who can look up from the face of this child to a hill with a cross and see the salvation of the Lord, a promise kept, a freedom won, a peace bestowed. Now, if you lived in a monastery, you'd sing Mary's song in the evening, at evening prayer, around six in the evening. But you would sing Simeon's song at night prayer, just before going to bed. That's not a bad way to end the day, is it? Or to end a year. We need this song when looking back to remind us that we are far too young you and I, to see the whole picture, the picture that Simeon sees. He looks back in other, utter honesty at Israel's history, the failed struggle to be faithful, the long years of exile, Israel's current captivity to the forces of Rome. Then he looks into this child's face and sees a future pregnant with possibilities. He sees a future led by God's Messiah, God's Savior, the Savior not just of those who share Israel's history, but the Savior of the whole world. My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. A light for revelation when I hear those words, I see my grandfather sitting in the farm kitchen reading his farm journals by the light of a 100-watt light bulb on a gooseneck lamp perched around, bent toward his left shoulder. When you reach a certain age, you need a lot of light to do your reading. We reach a time in life when our eyes are not always up to the job, but tonight Simeon's eyes are. By the light of this child's face, he sees the Savior coming. And so the church sings this old man's song as the day ends before a new day begins, or as in the case today, as the year ends and a new year begins. It reminds us that none of us sees the whole picture. Whatever the future holds, it includes God and God's Messiah. It's like being on one of those old-fashioned sailing ships. When you're down on the deck, all you see is water. You can't see the land. It seems you'll never reach the land. But if you send somebody up the mast to look in the crow's nest, you holler up and say, what do you see? And 
The person says, I see the land. I can see it from up here, but you can't see it from where you are. Simeon sees what Mary cannot see. He sees that her little boy will soon grow to be the Messiah, the Savior of the whole world. A sword will pierce his side, and the same sword will pierce her soul. But God is in it for the long run, and God will work it out. Looking back on this past year, we can see both bad and good. We see the war in Iraq ending with a whimper, leaving nearly 5,000 Americans dead and something like 10 times that number of dead Iraqis. It was a war that never should have happened, started and launched by a lie and fueled by hubris. We see examples of courage and sacrifice, not only by people in uniform, but also by aid workers and diplomats. We see the Church of Jesus Christ putting Matthew 25 to work, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting prisoners. And we also see the Church of Jesus Christ bickering and backbiting and behaving like so many spoiled children. It's tempting to throw up our hands in despair, but Simeon will not allow this. You cannot see the whole picture yet, he tells us. Just keep singing my song. And so we do. Because our eyes have seen just enough of what his eyes see to know his song is true. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.